Hello, my fellow drumsticks. I'm Snare. Today I'll be talking about the VFX color map utility that can be used inside of Patcher in FL Studio and how strong it actually is. I'll also give you examples of how you can use it to streamline and change the pace of your workflow. With that out of the way, let's begin! What does VFX Color Mapper do and how does it work? From the FL Studio online manual with slight alterations, when VFX, which stands for Voice Effects, Color Mapper is used in Patcher, up to 16 independent groups or single generators slash instruments may be controlled from the 16 note colors of the piano roll. VFX Color Mapper sends voice data, note and note related events, to link plugins. A voice port is conceptually similar to a MIDI channel, except that it is limited to note data including note-related properties Pan, Velocity, Mod X, Mod Y, and Fine Pitch. There are a few examples and a bit more text in the manual explaining how it works, and you can go check it for yourself, but I think it's all redundant as I will show you everything that you need to know in video format in even more depth. So, to start off, to use VFX Color Mapper, all you have to do is open an instance of Patcher and add it from the Generator section. From there, load anything that has a MIDI input and you can start having fun. For example, I will load up one instance of Citrus. I will connect the MIDI output line from Color Mapper to the MIDI input from Citrus. Now, whenever I press a note, it will send my MIDI information through Color Mapper and into Citrus to be transformed into audio. Great, that's useless. I could just as well drag the MIDI line directly from Patcher MIDI in and it would be the same result. But let's take a step back and check something. Here I have an instance of FL keys. In a piano roll, I will put down a C major triad. Now, if I were to change the color of the notes, you will see that it will sound the same. So what do these colors do? Well, they each resemble a different MIDI channel, 1 to 16. They all output for the same MIDI port, but they can be assigned different uses, like each playing a different instrument. Awesome! Now that we know that, let's come back to our patcher. Since we only have one MIDI output from Color Mapper to Citrus, the default one, this means that only the light green MIDI information, channel 1, will be sent through to Citrus. As you can see, using notes of different colors yields no output. This means that these colors are not being used. Let's give them a purpose. I'll go back inside of Patcher and load another instance of Citrus. This time, I'll make it sound like a square, just to differentiate from the other one. I will drag the second MIDI output line into its MIDI input, and there we go. We now control two different synths inside of one single piano roll. Going deeper. By now, I am 100% sure that you will have already realized that this might have come in quite handy in some instances throughout your song production career. Like making your super saws only take up one single mixer slot by having the layers be managed inside Patcher. With the ability to give each synth a different set of notes to play. Having different sliced drum loops in one single instance of Patcher, yet again only taking up one single mixer slot while being able to process all of them individually. Being able to keep different variations of your lead inside of one single place, and changing the color of your node depending on which you want to play. You can do that with bass as well, and so much more. But we can dig deeper into this. Let's load up an instance of Play. As some of you might know, Play is a plugin made to play orchestral libraries from east-west, similar to Contact. In one instance of Play, you can have up to 16 different instruments, each controlled individually by its own MIDI channel. This is where Color Mapper truly shines. You can have all of those instruments be controlled by different MIDI channels inside of one piano roll. And because this is Patcher, each output can be processed separately, meaning that you can have an entire orchestra taking up as little as one mixer track. Now, you might have noticed me doing some things that you may or may not know about, so let's talk about that. First, I right clicked on Color Mapper, went to Outputs, Events, and in that little drop down menu, I get to activate or deactivate different voice media outputs. This is how I managed to get more than four voices at one time. As you might have already realized, you can do the same with Play or your instrument of choice. And yet again, right clicking, going to Inputs and Events, but you will notice that they're all missing. Don't be alarmed! You actually don't need more than the single one that's already active. 
just drag all of the MIDI lines into the single input. Second, to split your audio output to different places, you have to go to your desired generator. Given that it can output audio in multiple places, and click on the top left cog called Mysterious Options. This will take you to the back end of the instrument. From there, make your way to the Processing tab and you will see a Connections panel. Just click Auto Map Outputs and that will map each output to a different audio channel. You can even make them all go to the same channel or mix and match them, although I don't see any real use in it. From there, exit out of your plugin and right click on it in Patcher. Navigate to Outputs, Audio, and in there, activate all the sends and add new outputs whenever you need more. Sends act like the rest of the audio outputs, and they go in order. Voila! You now have the power to process an entire orchestra inside of Patcher, without having to use mixer tracks. And you can use a Patcher to process each output, and in each Patcher have another Patcher with a lot and a lot of sound geysers. Notes. Opening any VFX utility outside of Patcher will instead load a Patcher with one instance of that certain VFX utility, so now you cannot use VFX outside of Patcher. The manual mentions using Color Mapper to change the main color of your MIDI. This way, you could change the color of your notes and make sure it doesn't mess with the output of your instrument. Some instruments use certain MIDI channels to modulate some parameters, but it is all outdated as you can change the color of your MIDI by hand now, no matter the channel it represents meaning that you can stay on the first MIDI channel no matter what. I have no fucking clue what the color depth does. I played around with it, but it literally changed nothing. So if you know, please tell me in the comments. You can stack VFX to create crazy complex sounds. Keep in mind that this might not be the thing to always streamline your workflow, but it is something that will change it, and you can utilize that change to your advantage. Outro. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it useful, make sure to subscribe and like, since I'll be doing more. You can also leave suggestions for the next one in the comments. I really like working on this one. Goodbye, my little drum samples. Love you all.